Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Silent Sneak Casino Highest Guide. This guide will serve as an updated version of the guide that I uploaded last year. It's a little outdated because both of the heist and also the strategies have changed. First up, location. The La Mesa Arcade is going to be your best friend. It's the cheapest and it's also the closest to your casino. Very convenient. If you need some help with getting started on the heist itself and how to get started with all that stuff, there's an eye in the top right of your screen that will get you to a video for that. Secondly, you will want to do the Casino Heist Jammer collectibles in order to unlock Avi Swordsman. It shouldn't take more than an hour or two and you will immediately have the best hacker available. Also, make sure to scope out the casino completely so you won't have to do that mission ever again. And you can then just go ahead and just simply only check the vault continents and then move on to the heist. And if you need help with the signal jammer collectibles as well as scoping out the casino, again there's an eye in the top right of your screen for a video for both of these. And yes, you can do everything in an invite only session and do it solo. The only time you really need to have someone else is in the finale, which in my opinion you should always do with two players since it makes you the most money no matter what loot you have or how much you took with you. There's a total of four different types of loot you can get from the vault contents mission. Cash, gold, art, and diamonds. Diamonds are tied to event weeks and they happen every few months. Cash is arguably the worst thing you can get, so even during regular weeks, just don't bother with them. There is a very easy way though to avoid getting cash. In the example I'm about to show you, this was recorded during when the diamond event week was going on, so please don't get confused with that. The method does not change. First you do the heist and pay the 25,000. Then you proceed to do the scope out missions like normal and see what the loot is. If it's cash, like in my case, then you should call Lester and cancel the heist while you're still in the casino. Then you want to return back to your arcade and start up a new heist again, thus paying also the 25000 When you do so, the game will automatically give you a new target. I happen to get lucky and I got diamonds. It's possible you will get the same target again, and if that's the case, then you can just cancel the heist again and repeat the before mentioned steps. Another neat little trick to lose cops without calling Lester, because during most prep missions you can't call him, is by giving Simeon a call and then requesting a job before you start the prep mission. Now you don't have to continuously do this, you just simply need one job invite. When you have a wanted level, you can then launch the job he sends you or accept any job invite you have and then back out of the job immediately. When you've done so, you will lose your wanted level and you can just simply move on with the heist. You will have to pick up the heist prep object again though. Speaking of moving on, you can also stop Lester from rambling on about the mission by giving any of your contacts in your phone a call, like for example your assistant or Brucey. As long as the contact usually picks up their phone, you will be okay. This allows the mission objective to also be shown a lot quicker, thus saving you a bunch of time in the long run. Next up is the crew. For Silent and Sneaky, you don't really need great weapons, so picking car will be fine. For vehicles, you can go with the cheapest option too and pick the Sentinel Classic as that's the best option. And for the hacker, we'll be taking Avi. If you have artist loot and you know what you're doing when hacking, you can also pick Christian and make an additional 3% at the end of the heist. With the correct loot acquired and the crew set, it's time for some prep missions. On your screen you can see an overview of the missions you should and shouldn't do. Patrol missions is also optional, especially if you've done the heist a few times already. However, the mission only takes about 5 minutes and it reveals all the locations of the guards inside of the casino, which can be very useful. So we'll leave it up to you if you find that worth it. For the security passes, make sure to select the right one. Pay attention to what I'm showing on screen for the correct image, as well as the confirmation screen asking you if you want the level 2 security passes. Without these passes, you will make your life much more difficult than it needs to be. Moving on to the prep missions. The prep missions all have multiple variations. For unmarked weapons there are six variations. Gankashi and Police Seizure are two very straightforward missions. Go here, take out a few dudes, take the weapons and lose the cops. Meriwether weapons where you kill a couple of Meriwether guards, steal the schedule and then take down a titan. Now for this one, I would be using an explosive sniper or any lock-on weapons or vehicles is definitely recommended.
military vehicles where you go to Fort St. Kudo, the steel barrage. For this one, I would make sure to use the trick to lose the wanted level that I mentioned before to get rid of the 4 star wanted level as soon as you leave Fort St. Kudo so you can drive back to the arcade much easier. Noose fence where you have to blow up the doors of four noose fence in order to find the weapons and then drive it back to the arcade. This one you can either use a sticky bomb or any other explosive on the back doors. And once you found the correct noose fan, you don't have to go after all the three others. And finally, smugglers. This one you can just fly or drive straight to the Tula floating in the water. Whether you take the jet skis that are parked for you or just throw your aircraft in the water, there's really no need to take out the smugglers. Just take the plane and fly the sunny shores. Also, make sure to use D-pad right or E on keyboard to go in hover mode and make landing a lot easier. For the getaway vehicles, there is a total of 7 variations, two of which are exclusive to Chester McCoy. And they're all pretty straightforward. Go here, take out a few dudes, take the car and leave. The airstrip one, however, can be a little bit annoying, so what you want to do is take out the drivers before they start their base. You can either use a sniper rifle from a distance or just use an assault rifle to take them out quickly so they don't drive away. If they happen to do drive away though, just wait until they finish the lap if you can't really reach them and you should be able to steal the cars after they exit the vehicles. For the hacking device you have to take out one or two agents, then get the security pass and then go to either the FIB building or the news HQ. If you have to go to the FIB building, then simply open your phone and find the suitcase with the Sightseer app in the bottom right of your phone. When you found the suitcase, then leave the building and lose the cops. If you're having a little bit of trouble with finding the suitcase, then make sure to check the toilets as well. I unfortunately speak from experience with that one. For the news HQ, you do the same thing as with the FIB building, but you can try to do this stealthy. But personally, I find it a waste of time, especially when you can lose the cops very easily. Make sure to go to the left and to the right to see if your signal increases and check smaller hallways with the servers as well, because the suitcase can be located there too. For the vault keys there are also two variations. Duggan's goons where you have to take out two security guards and take their vault key cards. For the drunk security guards you can melee him to avoid alerting the cops which would obviously be very favorable. If you have to steal the prison bus then don't bother because you can just head straight to the prison and then use lock on missiles from your aircraft to find it in which tower the guard is that you're looking for. There are multiple guards though, but they have heavy snipers, so make sure to stay on the move so you don't get hit by those heavy snipers because they will shoot you dead in one shot, which is never fun. Once you've taken them out, just simply go up the stairs in the right tower and just leave the area. For the nano drones you can either use some lock on missiles, the heavy sniper or any assault rifle to shoot down the drone. If you're using lock on missiles make sure you have enough distance away from the drone so it doesn't miss. Other than that it's pretty straightforward. If you're doing this solo then you can pick up all the drones by yourself before you head back to the arcade. There's no need to constantly go back and forth. For the vault drills there are two different variations. Clifford Mercenaries where you have to travel to Fort San Kudo or the power plant and take out a couple of guards and also a juggernaut before you can enter the building. This one is all about keeping your distance because these enemies have very strong accuracy and can basically kill you as soon as they see you, especially the juggernaut because he has a minigun. If you can then make sure to use any aircraft with lock on missiles, a sniper rifle or also an armored Karuma will do you very nicely and just pick them off from a distance. In the gameplay I was using an armored Kuruma and as soon as I saw the Juggernaut I started blasting him because he has a minigun and that can destroy your armored Kuruma pretty quickly. 
and arguably the worst one of the two is going to be the military variation. This prep mission even has half tanks so make sure to bring in armor Karuma with you so you don't get shot to death as soon as you get close. Park your Karuma nearby next to the fault laser, grab the laser and then get back in again. Another good idea would be to snipe the soldiers out of the half tanks before you enter the location. This way you can be certain your Karuma will stay one piece as well as that if you get out of your Karuma you won't get instant killed. Now it's time for the finale. The silent and the sneaky finale can be a little bit buggy at times when you're playing with a bad connection or one of your teammates are. For this reason, I personally think that it's best to try and have one person take care of all the enemies if that's the case. This is also the reason why you will see me do everything on my own in the gameplay. So let's begin. At the start there are multiple different variations where the two enemies can be. Behind the desk in front of you, on the left and on the right. When they're on the left, you can simply ignore them, but on the right, obviously, that is the way that you're going, so you're going to have to take them out. The best way to go about this is to keep an eye on your radar and wait until they have spawned, because it takes a couple of seconds for them to load it in. This is once again another reason why it's very useful to do patrol rounds. These two enemies can be shot with one bullet anywhere in the body, so you can take them both out with ease. When these two are down, you can move on to one of the three doors and make your way to the vault. Now these doors are always in a random order and it's never the same door. So it could be the one behind the desk or one of the other two on the side. If you see the two enemies that are in the hallway, you can just simply ignore them. They won't be able to spot you. Simply make your way into the little security room and ignore the enemy in the hallway and move on to the stairs. The moment you want to start moving is when the enemy in the hallway has his back turned towards you so you can safely make your way to the staircase. When you're in the staircase, you want to melee the guard with your gun after he went up the stairs and move on down. There's no need to take out the camera, just simply run it to first person so you're quick enough to run past it. Of course, if you want to be sure, you can use your stun gun on the camera to take it out temporarily. When you exit the staircase, you want to make your way here so you can trigger the enemy that will walk towards you. He can go in either of these two small hallways in between the two doors. If he's on the left where I am, then just simply melee him in the corner I'm standing in. If he's on the right like in the gameplay, just leave him and move on to taking out the guards. The guard in the little security room can also be ignored. He won't be able to see you through the glass. And when you're using the key cards to swipe the door and you're not able to use a microphone to talk to your teammate, then keep an eye on when he or she swipes the card. If you swipe the card at the moment your teammate does, you should be fine. Also, in the example footage I'm going to show you, I will be stealing art which takes 18 seconds. Gold takes 25 seconds, diamonds take 32 seconds, and cash takes 38 seconds. But just like Lester after he met Georgia, he didn't need to sneak around anymore to get some cash. Once you're in the vault, you want to start on the outside and go for the doors that have multiple cards behind them if you have diamonds or gold. Once you clear those out, then you want to make your way to the middle section and start grabbing the last bit of loot before the time runs out. On gold diamonds and cash, it's not possible to grab everything. In rare occasions, it is possible to grab all the gold, but this requires quick hacking and a bit of luck that the cards are in the right locations. In general, you should always keep an eye on the timer and be mindful of how much time you need to clear a card. If you need to make your way from the outside roll to the exit, then give yourself until there's 15 seconds left. If you're in the middle, then leave at 10 seconds and you should be fine. It's always better to leave a brick than leave with the alarm on. If you happen to fail and trigger the alarm, you can simply stay in the vault and wait until the gas kills you to give it another try. You will miss out on the elite challenge though, but that's only $100,000, so it's not really the end of the world in my opinion. For the hacking of the door, I will show you all four variations you can get and the solutions for them. These will always have the same eight options to choose from, but they will be put in a random order and the solution will always be the same. So try to memorize which four options go with which fingerprint. After you get all the loot you can carry, it's time to head out of the casino. Once you're back in this room, you want to stay on the right and use the wall as the way to guide you past the guards and the cameras, like shown on screen, and then make your way back to the staircase again. When you're in the staircase, simply go into first person to go up the stairs quicker, and once you're upstairs, make sure to keep an eye on your radar so you can see where the guard is. You'll want to wait until he's at this point so you can melee him without the camera spotting him. 
When he's down, just simply make your way through the middle room like shown on screen and then head to the exit. When you're outside of the casino, you want to take out this cop so you won't get a wanted level right away and then follow the route that I'm taking. Steal a car from the street or use your own getaway vehicle if it's across the street and make your way to the helicopter as shown on screen. A quick tip I can give you is to aim your gun if you need to make small adjustments to your movements and don't want to risk falling off. Also very useful when you have to climb the three ledges. When you reach the helicopter, simply make your way to Blaine County and lose the cops. The three drop-off locations are in the sawmill, underneath the big bridge near Avi's Island, and north of Polito. So simply make your way to Polito, and you should have lost the cops by the time you reach the sawmill. And that is all there is to it. You've successfully snuck your way through the casino and made yourself a lot of money. It's really that easy, isn't it? You know what else is really easy? Becoming a YouTube member like Chloe over here, join her and all the other fellow YouTube members by clicking the join button down below. But with all that said and with all that done, that was it for this one. Thank you all so very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later.